Good morning, besties. It's me, Dua Lipa, and welcome back to the Minecraft Guide. In today's episode, today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. A little bit fun. At this point, you'd have to be living at the very bottom of our cherry grow base to not know that there are some potential beautiful brand new mobs making their way over to Minecraft soon. Recently, I asked you guys about building, and oh baby, today, building's on the table. In honor of those magnificent brand new mobs potentially coming very soon, within the next eh, 30 minutes or so, we're gonna add every single one of them to our world right here. Down below real quick, you let me know, out of the three mobs, which mob is your favorite, who's got your vote? And without further ado, Bones, let's do. Hi, location, location. As always, with anything adding to a Minecraft world, we gotta get that prime real estate. I was thinking if I build our sculptures in the right spot, they'll be shining bright over the whole world for the rest of the series. I was also thinking at first, as soon as I saw this boat, <laughs> wait a second, that's a little bit nostalgic. If you know, you know. And then right after that, I was also, also thinking that maybe we'll kick things off chronologically with that blue orange crab. Ooh, that's gonna be a tricky one, but I think we could do it. If you ever find yourself trying to build some kind of abstract build inside of your world, the, my first big tip for you is location. If you can get the spot just right, it might do your build a huge big favor. And get that spot just right? Well, I think this spot, right on the hill, right next to the bamboo beauty, that might just do just right. So today's episode is our first practice in kind of like a little bit of a deep dive into build theory and build tips and tricks, specifically the abstract form. If we're gonna set up a crab inside of our world, it's good to have a reference first. And unfortunately for us today, our only official reference is gonna be this video right here. We got the colors, blue, orange, white, but uh, other than that, we're really not given much here. When working on builds, designing, theorizing, any of that kind of stuff right there, the biggest tip of advice that I could give you is creative mode. More specifically for us today, creative mode inside of a customized world. That's all going to be grass as far as the eye could see. By opening ourselves up to creative Minecraft, we can, of course, take a look at every single block in the game and really actually explore our options here and maybe get something in relatively quicker. But also, like, I mean, it's way easier to build here. You can do all this really quick and then say, hey, that's not a crab. Let me take it back down. You see how quick that was? I'm fast, boy. All right, now sliding this giant cut out of a crab in here. Oh my gosh, that's terrifyingly large. And looking at the colors here, the first thing we should probably break out here is our block palette. If we're going to want to build some kind of gigantic crab inside of our world, and we want to make it look realistic, we got to get the colors just right. This is where creative Minecraft comes in hand a huge time, because of course you've got a gigantic inventory, and nowadays when it comes to colors, you got a whole tab for colored blocks. Maybe you want to make it all out of concrete, terracotta, or wool. Yeah, that's beautiful. But, hey, bud, small problem. In the context of my survival world, gigantic, wonderful wool farm, it's kind of off the table. I, I mean, this one I, I could do. White wool is fine, but I don't really have a sheep factory built quite yet. So we're going to have to find alternatives. Keeping in mind what I have going on inside of my world, a couple episodes ago, well, actually, like tons and tens of episodes ago now, we actually went off in the nether and found quite a bit of blue warped wood. I think blue warped wood, maybe not so much the stem, but blue warped wood, that could do good for the blue part of the crab. For the orange part of the crab, oh, it's not a problem at all. It's almost like I, hey, maybe set this up and planned for it a little while ago. We collected just about every single wood type in Minecraft, and that's going to give us a whole lot of color variation here. For a crabby block palette, I think that's, like, not bad. We may find we need to come back in here and add a couple other blocks to the palette, maybe like black for eyes or something, but for the most part, palette, check done, that's out of the way. So with our block palette cracked out for the most abstract build of the world so far, and even better, with I think all of these blocks readily available for me, the next thing we should probably consider is shape. And great news, everything just keeps getting better today because this crab, I mean, it's gonna be kind of like a weird shape. Think about a crab, it's got claws, it's got eyes, it's got shape to it, you know, it's a little bit strange. For example, if I wanted to build a crab claw, maybe I could do something like that, and even better, right here with the shape stuff in mind, I don't think I need to make any adjustments to my palette at all. Because we have wood inside of the palette, we have slabs, staircases, and other tricky things. That's gonna allow for a lot of build diversification later on. All in all here, what I'm saying is consider the shape of your potential future crabby build. Are you going to need to do something a little bit more complex with the build? Because if you are, maybe consider using a block that has more complex shapes built in, like fence gates and slabs and stairs. 
Now finally, it all comes down to the scale of the build that we want to build today. With a Minecraft build, any kind, you could build a small, big, medium, large, or wide. Ah, this crab. So, the smallest technical crab that I could build is probably something like this right here. Ah, Crablington. <laughs> I don't know if that's like really the build you came here to see though, is it? It's a little bit small. Pulling our reference back up, I think instead, what I want to maybe try and crack out here is a medium-sized build. I'm looking to build a crab that is like a decent-sized crab so we can see it from a little bit of a ways away and you can tell what it is. But at the same time, I don't need this to be a monstrosity towering over every single other future build and current build that I build inside of my world. Now, when figuring out the shape and the sizing of everything like that, it's good to have good reference pictures. Right now, I'm actually working off of something absolutely terrible it's horrendous now for a more like fresh new concept like something like the crab right here there might be a little bit trickier to find some good concept arts that you could base your build off of but one great spot to check is actually the wasteland the wasteland or today's sponsor my brand new instagram if you haven't heard about it yet you need to drop a follow urgently big things are happening that's all i could say about it right now though because we have big things to do over on Twitter, Minecraft Crab, the fan art, the designs inside of the Minecraft community, they go hard sometimes. Like, I mean, look at this image right here. Ooh, that's beautiful. And this is actually like a really good base for like what we're going to try and create here. We can see a little bit more that we have like a white part on the bottom that swoops up. We've got the blue top and we've got the big claws. Carrying on here and try to source a little bit of good source imagery for us. We get memes, we get tweets, and then we get beautiful blocky models pixel stories this might be perfect when working on any kind of minecraft build whether it's just a simple building or maybe a little bit more of an abstract statue no matter what you're doing it's a great idea to have a picture that you're kind of trying to base your build off of even if you consider yourself the most professional of all buildings having a good image source for any kind of build you're trying to work on is one of the best favorites you could do for yourself so back over inside of our humble little world that i like to call world here it's off to the build site for today's build I was thinking, sitting right on top of this hill with this white wolf producing machine that might be really, really helpful is going to be a really nice view for the whole, like, build and everything like that. But then also, we'll take the height one step farther, I think, on top of the hill right below the build. I was thinking maybe we make, like, a stone platform so we have, like, a base for the statue to stand on and then we have the statue itself looking out this way into the sunset and maybe at the spoilers. All right, so friends, right now is an exciting time inside of the Minecraft community. Dare I say, maybe almost like my favorite part of the year. Minecraft live season, the big hype, the excitement, everything like that. In order to make sure this episode will come out in a timely fashion, relatively close to the mob vote, I went ahead and actually pre-recorded the next episode. So that's right. Right now, I'm making episode 36, and 37 is fully finished. Throughout the duration of today's episode, you may get a glimpse of something a little bit unfamiliar looking in the background and very, very productive at that. I'm gonna need you to just like, mind snap, it, it, wipe it from your mind. You didn't see a thing. You have no clue what's going on in the background and you have no clue what the next episode could be. All right, so before I crack on with a little bit of building, I think it's time we do a little bit of mining. It looks like I have an interesting cave down here. Is this, oh, it really is a cave. It actually is a proper cave that cuts down into like the, oh, the dripstone caves. I feel like that just went really deep too. Oh, that's so cool. Right and early the next morning, it's time to get to the build. Now for our build today, because it's gonna be a little bit more strange, what I recommend doing when working on any kind of more strange build or anything like that, is really just focus on one side of the build, the front of the build. Because we're working on a design that is like really weird looking, relatively speaking, in the grand scheme of Minecraft, I think it will be a whole lot easier to get the front of the build in, get the shape perfectly perfect from the front, then I could come back in later on on like the back side of the build and, you know, fill it all in, get the details in, solid it up. So by taking a look at this beautiful reference art for the crab here that we're trying to build today, we can quite literally count the pixels. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think in our world, I want it to be a little bit smaller. We'll cut one block off of either side. So honing in on a 2D front of the build only part of the build, the first here, we've got a seven block line of white terracotta. I think that might look nice. It's like a, a good white tone that isn't too intense. After that, we do maybe like a little bit swerve up. That seems like it makes sense for the crab. And then we begin with the blue part of this crab. 
the mangrove crab when this thing was first announced to the blue whoo that's like beautiful looking i almost wonder if maybe if the crab wins could we end up seeing more crab variants like maybe a, a red crab or something because that could be fire now our crab here based off of the art that we're working off of it doesn't need to be very tall at all i think maybe something like four blocks tall now in the real world the mangrove crab it's kind of like a circular shaped thing and high key I got no chance that I think I want to try and make this a circular shaped crab. Instead, to accentuate the Minecrafty vibe, we're going to go ahead and keep this crab a nice square shape. On the front of the crab, to add a little bit of detail to it immediately, I think we could come out with these, like, pincher looking things. Maybe spaced like that. Or actually a little bit in. Now, I have to excuse me, because you see, when it comes to the specific anatomies of the crab, or heck, the specific anatomies of almost any animal in general, yeah, it's not really it. A biology, more like nap time to me, except to not actually nap time because I was way too afraid to sleep inside of class, because what if I snored or something like that? So anyways, the crab, the front of it, ooh, it's beautiful. I mean, we got a lot of planks going on, but clearly we've got eyes on top of this boy. We've got the pinchers on the front of the mouth, whatever you call that, the bottom, the blue. Whew. I think we're about ready for a claw. Well, lads, I can't believe it. I can't believe the day is finally upon us. The day of reckoning where we actually get to build with acacia wood instead of our world. Who knew this stuff would come in handy? All right, so our build is still uh, in what I would call a relatively early state. We might end up coming back in and changing it a little bit later on. But for now, we're going to start building off on the side of the build with a little bit of orange. If we're going to have a crab claw on this thing, I was thinking for sure. We want to have like maybe like acacia pinchers something like that going on i think maybe to like level up the pinchers and make them a little bit more detailed though what if we cave in here with a little bit of a slap as always on any kind of minecraft build the more depth you can get in the probably better the build is going to end up looking for a small crab claw with a little bit of pinching action going on i mean it's okay i think the slabs on the bottom are maybe throwing me off so we'll pull those out Dang, maybe we'll call that good we'll call that a small claw Swing it over to the other side of the build, it's time for the big claw. And in order to make this big claw look a little bit better and make the build look more cool, I think what I'd like to try and do is make the big claw pop up a little bit past the height of the crab. I think I'll also try and make this claw pop out a little bit farther than the rest of the build too. I've got this giant, giant claw and I want to make it big and uneven on the scale of the rest of the build here, so I'm using slabs, but... With it blending straight into the rest of the build, it kind of kills the vibe. And again, this is where the block palette comes in. I did myself wonders, huge favors when picking out this block palette because again, staircases, slabs, I got them all. I could easily make this build to pop out and look a little bit more cool by putting staircases at the back. It almost will create like a, whoa, uh, what's going on there with those blocks? That's pretty cool looking type vibe. Bright and early the next morning from a vantage point far, far away. <sighs> <laughs> right in early the next morning for the bandit boy far far away we've got a beautiful looking crab i think i want to come in and detail the face up a little bit definitely add some legs to it as well but oh oh boy that's a crab that's definitely a mangrove swamp looking crab so this right here once you hopefully make it to this point to the build oh it's my favorite part of the build this is the detailing part of the build we're gonna come into this build with blocks that are similar in color, but maybe different in texture to these planks, and basically just swap them out. Similar in tone, but different in texture, oh, it's so easy. All I need to do is come in here with a little bit of stripped logs, and instantly, this build is gonna look way more interesting looking. Instead of planks all over the build on like the claw, the crab, everything like that, we'll get the smooth texture too. Doing a Minecraft build and making it look good, it's not only about depth, but it's also about texture. If we can swap it up and break it up, maybe something like that right there, we can call it good and start to move on to the rest of the build. So my rule of thumb for these abstract builds is figure out the front, get the front looking exactly perfectly the way that you want it. Then after that, come into the side of the build and do whatever else you need to do to the side of the build to make it look good. Now what you need to do to the side and of course the back of the build, it's a variable. It depends on what you're going to have going on behind the build or of course in front of the build. For now, me personally, I'm really not too sure what I'm going to have going on on the side of the build or definitely the back of the build. It's a beautiful looking meadow behind where I'm building our build today. So maybe probably eventually I'll come back in and add something to it. But at least for now, all that I really need to worry about when it comes to detailing the build was really the front side that we did. I think I could basically just slap some more blue planks in the back of the thing and almost like call it good. As simple as that sounds. I 
just a tiny bit of time later, a little bit of platforming, and voila. Masterpiece? Or should I say, Crabsterpiece? Number one. So mob number two on the menu of mobs that we're building in today's video and not actually eating because that would be actually insanely insanely uh, terrible is the apparently terrifying armadillo. The armadillo, the armadillo, oh boy. This is gonna be an easy one or it's gonna be one of the hardest things to build of all mankind, humanity, and all time. Yeah. So over inside of our newly christened guide flats world, the pallet today. Oh, the pallet for the armadillo. Oh, it's going to be so easy. It's straight in front of me the whole time. I think spruce wood. Spruce wood is not only going to allow for all of those cool variations like staircases and slabs, but I think tone wise, it's going to look pretty good too. But I think we could maybe spice it up with a little bit of mud, maybe mix that in there. Those tones mix really, really well and match pretty much perfectly. And then also it had a little bit of pink as well. I think maybe we could try and do like a really small build. Not a micro build, but like pretty small. And use a cherry trap door somewhere. So pallet check done. Next up, we want to talk a little bit about the scale of the build. For the crab, we went with the medium scale. I think for this one, like I just mentioned, I'd like to try and do it a little bit smaller. You see, I don't know what it is with Minecraft mobs that are naturally just square. You would think that those would be the easiest mobs to build, but for some reason, apparently I just can't do it. I think by keeping the build a little bit smaller, the odds of it looking good and adorable Increase exponentially. And so now finally the shape. The third thing that we should consider before we dive into this build, other than location. The shape is going to be so straightforward. I can see it now. We got little blocks for the feet. We got a couple more blocks for like the side of the body. Maybe staircases or something for those diagonal looking ears. And uh, if the build is small enough, maybe even button eyes too. Now look, I can't believe I'm saying this, but at least right now, as of the recording of this video, I can't decide who I'm voting for. Like, this mob vote is closer than ever. This year, I feel like the devs did a really, really good job of picking three different mob candidates that are all around, just, like, relatively good-looking. And they offer something cool and unique to the game. But either way, regardless, there's only one spot that I can put this statue, and that's, of course, near sweet dear Bonzo's Bridge. If the armadillo was already in Minecraft, like, say, months ago, the tragedy that happened, it would have never happened. So we've got this disgusting statue on the other side, sitting and watching. I figure what we could do is maybe put a little bit of balance into the universe, if you will. And maybe right on the other side of the build, at the entrance to the other half of the world that eventually we'll be building all over. Maybe like right over here, we can set up our small armadillo statue. When building a small build and keeping it nice and compact, I recommend working on, or at least trying to work on every single side at once. With this build too, to kind of like crack it out and get it in, we'll place some temporary blocks down here and also work from the bottom up. So with the armadillo in the revealed trailer, we can see like a little bit of like banding going on on this mod. I figured I could maybe recreate that banding by placing spruce logs, maybe like say three blocks tall. You know, try and make sure this is a good fully solid boy and then jump off of the side of this thing and strip all of this. Because of the logs and their natural texture, we get that banding going on. Like, I mean, look, you can't deny. Alrighty, this looks exactly like an armadillo. Right? I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel like the small statue size is not only relatively easy to pull off, but it fits in really, really well, too. They could look really, really fire. So on our armadillo friend over here, so far, so... Well, so far, so. We'll leave it at that. Next up, I think it's time for the head. And according to the video, the head is going to be narrow and long. What if we maybe put some spruce stripped logs, stick it out, and some staircases on the bottom? Blackstone buttons, oh, blackstone buttons. I've always thought it's so weird that I need to make you polished blackstone buttons. So, so far, the head is looking a little bit, eh, you could say, like, lacking, if you will, to, for lack of a nicer term. Maybe to make the head a little bit less lacking, we could do more spruce logs up here, and then this is where I was kind of envisioning the ears coming. Maybe I could jump up with a couple staircases, kind of just like that, keeping the build nice and small, and... Did I just build a moose? Moose moose. Nobody will call it a moose because it's not a moose, okay? Thanks. Carrying on with our detailing of our clearly, um, yeah. I keep wanting to call this thing an aardvark, an anteater. Carrying out with the armadillo, we do some slabs right there. The button eye is right there. And then, of course, on the front of this thing, there's only one spot for the nose. That's going to be right there. And actually, maybe the eyes should move forward. That looks weird. And a build tip that I will give you on any kind of build, whether it's an abstract statue, whether it's a beautiful building or anything like that. Oh, trap doors, trap doors. Baby, it's all about trap doors. Trap doors are one of the best ways to add a little bit of depth to the game. 
I mean, after all, this is like the closest thing we have to vertical slabs in the entire game. To go ahead and continue finishing up this build, I think the top of the build, looking at it from the side here, it needs to be a little bit taller. To make the top a little bit taller, easy. We'll put some slabs in here, and then maybe we leave it out right here because this is like blending down into the head. I feel like that'll make sense. Close these trap doors, and all of a sudden, the bending got even more intense, and whew, that's a... That's a mighty all right looking ar ar aardvark, yeah. We just come in. It's a mighty all right looking aardvark, but of course, every builder needs a good surrounding. On the crab, I built it on a pedestal, a pedestal out of stone. With this little guy over here, because it lives naturally in a dirty environment, the savannah biome, maybe we'll go ahead and put a little bit of coarse dirt around. Kind of like, almost like it's coming to life or something. That'd be cool. Add a couple of small decor pieces around Bonzo's best friend, and voila! The world's smallest, most compact beautifulest, Armadillo. You know, there's something oddly peaceful about standing on the porch in the pouring Minecraft rain and kind of just listening to the rain fall. Hey, anyways, we should get to it. And taking a look at all of our materials inside of the house that is clearly Fully finished and fully furnished, fully finished and fully furnished. For this very final mob, because I think I kind of was cooking with that armadillo over there, what I think I want to do is kind of like a similar small vibe, but maybe like make it a little bit bigger this time. Ah, mob number three. You know, to be honest, I kind of feel really terrible for the penguin. I mean, I guess we'll see how it plays out next week, but like, I feel like the penguin, unfortunately, does not have a fighting chance at all. Compared to the other two mobs, I... <laughs> just not enough there the poor penguin the poor penguin the poor penguin with a very very white stomach i think i know exactly where i want to build this penguin but i don't think i should use snow as the stomach if i did it might kind of blend in too much so today throughout our big building extravaganza we talked all about how you could lead into a build by planning your build palette considering the sizing of your build and then finally working out the shape a little bit maybe inside of a creative world and another little trick that I never really necessarily mentioned explicitly today, when you're setting up your build, it's all about the surrounding as well. If I were to have, say, you built the armadillo and just left it alone sitting inside of a field, I mean, I guess maybe you would know it's an armadillo from context clues or something like that, but really, to make a build come to life all the way, you gotta worry about the area around your build as well. If your build doesn't naturally, inherently fit in on top of a snowy mountain, then you're gonna need to change it. I promise you, no, 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 I guarantee you that if you spend a little bit more time on your build than maybe, say, you would usually spend on your build, and by dedicating just a little bit more time to your build, and more specifically, the area around your build, you'll instantly level it up. And if you're not much of a builder and you don't really like to do the whole building thing, well then easy, pick a spot where you're gonna set up your build where it'll kind of like, maybe already naturally blend in. That could be a cool mountain, it could be like a like a cool fjord with a nice backdrop already built in, or even maybe just the side of a cliff, like a cave or something. I'm out of blackstone. Now while I make the long trek down my nether hallway to get a little bit more blackstone to finish up today's final build, <laughs> today's comment to the day what? I, I, look, I'm so sorry, when I read this, I, I literally burst out laughing. I went to Janelle Monet concert and ended up spending six days in a hospital a week later. All right, so I don't know the stitch. I'm gonna assume that you're good now, but like, <laughs> what in the world? This is some severe Janelle Monet slander. <laughs> I think we need more of this story. Was this incident related somehow? All right, so in the world of cool little build tricks that I really, really love to use, staircases. You could use staircases when trying to make a statue to make some kind of cool looking eye block that's a little bit more detailed. I don't know if this is going to be terrifying looking, but maybe glowing eyes. Yeah, that might be terrifying looking. You see, I was thinking here, maybe if it works out that we could have shroom light as the eyes on the penguin. So then like from far away, maybe from the armadillo or something, the eyes are like actually letting out light. That could be cool. Now check it. For a plain old classic emperor penguin, we'd be checked on. But check it right here. I don't think this is any normal emperor penguin. I think it's like a rock hopper penguin or something like that. 
With peace and love and so much kindness, tenderness, and respect, you would say nothing about it. This is what I was thinking. Maybe for the rock hopper penguin here, what we could do is a little bit of trap door right there. Maybe a little bit of trap door over here. Running dangerously low on birch wood, what if we maybe did one more little bit of trap door right there and one more little bit of trap door right there? This is, of course, not really negotiable. We need to cover up the light from the side, otherwise it would look really, really weird from down there. Then maybe carrying on with the rest of the top of the penguin to do those cool, crazy little things. Uh, maybe? Could actually maybe even solid it up a little bit with some slabs in here. Maybe? Swinging it over to the back, the rear side, the caboose of the penguin. We could solid it up with a little bit more blackstone. And we could carefully scale down the side of the mountain, watching our step every single step of the way. We could run away, bobbing and weaving through today's bonus build. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. We could run really, really far away. Pause, stop, and turn 180 degrees and... <laughs> It's a, it's a penguin. All right, so my wife just walked in and looked at what I was building in Minecraft, and you know what she said about this penguin? I asked her, and she said it looks like this penguin's name is Georgie. <laughs> so, I think that's Georgie. I think that's Georgie living on top of the mountain forever. So throughout today's episode focused on building, we talked all about building a little bit of abstract builds. Hopefully, somewhere inside of this episode, you found a tip or two that'll be helpful to you. Of course, there are so many other building tips out there. If you got another one, drop it down in the comments below. Maybe specifically about building weird things like statues or abstract builds. How do you jump into that project? Today's bonus build is a little bit of a bonus project that'll be ongoing a little bit more long term. I've been thinking about the base here and how I want to beautify it a little bit and also break up some of the pink all over the place. So it's not that I don't like the pink trees because I really do. I think they add to the area. I love the particle effects, but I also love some other colors in here too. The oak leaf. I've decided that I really, really like the tone of the oak leaf all over the base. So that's where I was thinking. What if I maybe, just from time to time, all over the base started running around and dropping down the trees? I plant a sapling just like that. I put a tree brace right above it. And then give it time. And hopefully I get one of the world's most beautiful trees. Something like that. Now see, I gotta be careful with the angles that I'm showing you here today. But basically, I was thinking maybe along the main stretch, I could have two big oak trees towering in there. That could look pretty nice. And then also, definitely, behind where the bamboo thing is, next to the giant king crab. Yeah, that could be pretty cool. I'm thinking slowly, as we begin to work on the base and build a couple more buildings in here, maybe even next episode or something, I'll definitely be adding even more trees to it. What do you think about the plan? Good idea? Or not so much? The crab, the armadillo, the penguin. And just like that, all three inside of our world. And just like that, which statue is your favorite? You let me know your take down below, and thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't yet, smash like and subscribe. New episodes coming all the time. Today, right here at the end of the episode, I think it's about time we finally do it to them. Now, I don't really know what color I should do with this, but I think it's finally time we trim another piece of bark. The chest plate, by far, easily, hands down, since the day I found it, I knew I wanted the eye trim on the chest plate. I think it looks so good. The question is, what color do I do? Considering the fact that we already did gold on the pants, I don't think I want to do gold again. Looking through all the other options that we have, like, on hand right now, and considering the fact that later on this is going to be netherite, I almost am so tempted to do diamond on diamond. I feel like it might look good. Another one that I could see being, like, high-key fire here is maybe nether quartz. Nether quartz is a pretty fire-looking trim. I mean, whew. Ah, it's so hard. Diamond quartz, diamond quartz, diamond quartz. You know what? I think it's quartz. We'll take quartz for now. We could always trim over it later. Ooh. <laughs> I look good. I look so good. Hey, anyways, thank you all so much for watching. It's been me, Waddles, and I will see you all in the next episode. Next time. Goodbye.